I'm gonna have to put the camera away again. It's been a lot of rain to make up for all the lack of rain we had earlier in the summer. Uh, it's really hard to film. The camera that I'm using right now is not all that weather sealed, so it doesn't like all this rain. So I'm gonna have to put it away. Yeah, I'll keep getting this foundation ready. And probably by the time the rain stops in the next couple of days, I'll be uh, ready to pour the footings. And then a couple of days later, get the walls starting to come up. So good, good gardening weather. I guess that's what I'll do. I'll get caught up in all the gardens, pulling the uh, plants out that have matured and getting another succession of seeds planted. What I'm trying to do between the rain showers here is to uh, get this foundation laid and formed. So these are just rough forms that I'm making here. I'm gonna get this ground level with gravel so I can dig up enough. Kind of running short of it, but I get enough to level this off, this whole pad, and get the 12 by 24 foot um, foundation footing laid out. And then I'll mix the concrete, mix the cement by hand tomorrow or the following day, like I did for, um, for the forest kitchen, uh, barbecue especially. Um, so what I'll do is get this hopefully formed today. Hopefully the rain stops long enough that for a couple of days that I can get some uh, get this poured and let it set. And then I'm going to start on the wood. So I've got enough wood milled now to do the full first floor. So this lower section, the basement, cellar. And I have, what, two thirds maybe of the logs uh, formed or milled and hewed to start the cabin portion above. So 12 by 24, get this laid out, get the foundation poured and then start. Um, the bottom I'm gonna do timber frame style. So eight foot uh, ceiling probably in the, in the basement or maybe seven feet so that I can keep it uh, mod modulated, the temperatures a little bit better. So I'm probably gonna do seven feet maybe rather than eight feet in the lower level here. So it's not as much space to keep cool or heated and not as much to backfill. And then a full eight foot or higher ceiling in the top floor. Um, it's a little bit challenging. So I guess what's unusual here, if you're, a, if you're a builder and you know how to do foundations and stuff, I don't have the luxury of, have, I got my neighbor to come in with the power equipment to dig this once, but I can't keep asking him to come back. So. What I'm doing is trying to get this leveled out by hand, dug out and gravel in place and stone. But um, this is bedrock, so it doesn't look like a very solid foundation or solid footing. But the bedrock in the corners especially, I dug down to it. And uh, you can see behind here that solid bedrock and on, on a slope, which is why I couldn't build this building further up and I couldn't get a, a bigger, flatter area. So this will be solid enough. And then what I'm, I'll do after I get this footing done in the basement foundation built, and it is a wood foundation, is that I'll backfill to within a foot all around here with the, uh, this is pretty good. Well, you can see a lot of clay in the top part, but most of it's actually more like uh, uh, gravel. Um, so I'll backfill anyway within a foot and then I'll get clean gravel to put in and backfill up against the wall after I waterproof it so that there's no soil pressure on the, and water pressure on the sides of the building. So that's the plan. And again, it's just you trying to utilize as much natural materials as I can from the land. So it's not um, like I just want to bring in all kinds of cement because I have to bring them in, in bag at a time or a couple bags at a time and pour that. So I don't want to use a lot of cement for the whole building, which means I don't want I can't really pour a full foundation out of cement or even block. I didn't want to bring that much uh, cement block in. So that's the plan. Um, hopefully the weather cooperates this week. Good morning, welcome back to the cabin. Welcome back to the workshop in this case. Um, I've been just basically shoveling gravel for the last two days and trying to get this ground leveled out and formed so that I can pour this concrete footing for the workshop. So it's been a lot of work and not very interesting, so I haven't filmed much. Um, part of what I've been thinking about though as I'm working is that the uh, what the definition of self-reliance is and what I'm doing here and sometimes on days like that where I'm working really hard and not producing much um, feels like, okay, what is 
uh, what's behind what I'm doing and the way I'm doing it. And I think the definition of self-reliance is part of the answer to that question. Um, and the definition that I really like is that uh, self-reliance is the ability to depend on oneself or one's abilities. So I've lived a fairly, fairly diverse uh, lifestyle where I've experienced different forms of, uh, of recreation and, and career um, occupation. Um, but by no means am I an expert at anything and have, have that wide variety of experience. So what I'm experiencing now as I work on this homestead is such a diverse um, uh, skill set or diverse activity uh, list that is causing me to learn things uh, much more rapidly than I would be if I hadn't fully immersed myself in this lifestyle. And uh, the physical work part of it, the part where I'm choosing to use hand tools for the most part and choosing to do things without, man without power equipment, um, it's not because uh, it's not a, a dogma or it's not something that I feel so strongly about that I'm a, opposed to power. Uh, there's a couple reasons behind it. One is financial. One is that I felt like to be self-reliant, um, meant to be as debt-free and as um, free from the burdens of financial, uh, the financial system as possible. So by not getting into debt to purchase uh, big equipment, for example, has been one of my primary goals for this and secondly is to learn how to use all of the things that you can buy once and never have or have very little future expenses to maintain that thing so in other words to use a handsaw rather than a chainsaw means that I buy that chainsaw once and a file and I can make that handsaw uh, function adequately for a lifetime where a chainsaw needs continual inputs in the form of fuel rather than uh, manual human powered um, fuel. Um, so with fuel and oil, gas and oil, and then um, you know chains and things that need to be maintained and then all the little parts that break down. So chainsaw has a very limited lifespan compared to a handsaw. So learning how to use all of the hand tools, at least learning how to use them, even if I choose to then use something like a chainsaw to cut my firewood, I have that knowledge in my back pocket and I have that self-reliance skill that I can always fall back on in the event that um, either fuel is not available or a chainsaw breaks down, I don't have the resources to replace it or you know any number of factors that would cause me to need to go back to that hand tool that I've learned how to utilize and I've kept up my physical strength um, and health in order to use that tool. So that's really I would say the foundation of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, why I'm mostly showing the use of hand tools on my channels. Not that I'm using them exclusively, not that I'm not using power equipment in this case to uh, excavate this this land here and the pond, dig the pond. Uh, imagine digging that by hand. I would literally be years digging that, that pond. Um, so I'm not opposed, like I said, to using power equipment, using power tools and using electricity but um, I'm going to learn how to uh, do without as much as possible and to have a minimal demand on inputs um, f throughout the rest of my life. So this, the pond is my source of water. Um, the, the pond and water collection or rain collection that I'll be doing here at, on all the buildings is to avoid the cost of getting a drilled well. The drilled well is about $18,000 to have done in this area. Um, I know I need to go down like 300 feet to hit an aquifer that'll provide enough water to justify the drilled well. And then there's the cost, of course, and uh, maintenance of electricity to supply the, the pump to pump that water. So those are the main reasons I've avoided drilling a well. Um, not to say that it's not possibly in the future, we'll see. But in the meantime, I have these uh, water sources that I can utilize. And uh, basically three sources of it. We've got the pond, we've got the stream, and have rainwater, and in the winter I've got snow. So I'm well equipped in the event that uh, I can't you know, count on power or the cost of a drilled well. So that's, uh, that's my idea of self-reliance. It's not 100%. Um, I don't believe that 100% self self-reliance is even an attainable goal. 
However, I think it's a justifiable goal in order to pursue it to the point where you're confident enough or have built enough skills and um, physical strength in order to, to be as self-reliant as possible um, in the event that it's necessary. So um, I'm going to continue to, to kind of expand on that idea on future videos because it's really something I think a lot about as I go through this process of, of simplifying. I don't know, it's, uh, it's, confu it's not confusing, but it's, uh, um, I don't know, it, it, I find it intriguing that somebody would want to do that. And the number of people that I see throughout the world that are attracted to the idea of this simple, simpler lifestyle. Um, I, it's obviously, a, there's something there that's uh, compelling us to, to think that way. And I'm going to continue to explore it physically, to actually, actually living out my uh, my thoughts, and then uh, mentally just considering as I'm working what uh, what this path means to me and what this and what this um, connection of the past means to me. So that being said, I have to hand mix some concrete, get this foundation poured, and then I've got a a, found, um, a mixer as well that I'll do the rest of it with but I am going to start off by doing um, pouring the, or mixing this concrete and pouring it manually something again I feel strongly in um, it's been really physically demanding the last few days shoveling all this gravel and leveling this out and shoveling the the uh, um, uh, soil mixture and clay mixture and gravel and sand that's come out of the pond shoveling that by hand to bank this up um, and then moving these heavy rocks around as well it's been very physically demanding so it should have been a rest day for me but I want to get this thing poured and let it set before I start building the wood structure on top of it in the next couple of days so that's it I'm going to uh, sign off on this video um, but if you are interested in seeing how this project progresses and seeing the rest of the homestead then please subscribe and uh, also check out my other channel where I there's four years, almost five years now of, of starting off doing uh, outdoor adventures and then transitioning to building this homestead. Um, so please head over there and subscribe as well. So as always, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you back here at the cabin next time. Take care.